Namaste. 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 Love you too, Bhagavan. Thank you. Um, yes. Um, the questions uh, we have are, um, uh, and just to say we are about 15 people here, Bhagavan, and um, there are about 40 or more people watching online as well in other places uh, in the UK. And um, so the first question we had um, was, hold on, just looking to see what we said. Um, we've, uh, we've seen the whole world uh, respond just now as one family to the earthquake in uh, Haiti. And um, what can we do as Diksha givers to help this and other situations like it? What we could do is we could have the map and uh, pictures of uh, when you see on the image, you could be raised upon. And then you could be, you could give that picture. Same image of the mind. The people there might be getting some kind of solace or anything from it. Absolutely. Again. They might very well come out of the trauma. We have done this in the case of uh, an earthquake in Gujarat in India, and we had uh, very good results. We could do that. This could not only uh, remove the trauma, but it could also result in uh, they are getting material help. So, though you are far removed from Haiti, you could still do it. A little practice, and you will find uh, it's really working very well. Only thing is, there could be this mental barrier as to how could this happen? But then if you go ahead and do it, you will see it is in fact happening. So that's how you could help from here. Uh, thank you. So the, um, uh, the next question is um, really is about um, now that we're rapidly increasing the number of Diksha givers uh, with more trainers uh, being trained, how can we increase the interest in receiving Diksha uh, from, uh, from the people all around us? By talking to our friends, but uh, should we be doing more, like giving public talks or talking to the media? What, what more can we do to uh, help increase the interest? Can you hear us? Yeah. Is going to have a talk. But then we have some uh, people who already met even before 2012. But the majority of them happen to be Indians and who do not speak English. So that is a problem. We are hoping to get some people who could speak English. But then uh, there are also Westerners. But fortunately, two days ago, we came across a Westerner who uh, is fully awakened. He's from uh, Holland. And uh, I think in a day or two, we'll be uploading uh, uh, his interview on the uh, on our website. And I think uh, in due course, we'll be able to upload more and more people who have fully made it. Now, listening to these people would be of immense help, uh, not only in one's growth, but I think the message would be passed to us with the people that it is indeed possible uh, to become awakened and enlightened. I think. Uh, it's now uh, actually started now. I think it's slowly beginning to accelerate. Um, I think very soon we'll have more and more people. But the one concrete listener we have here who happened to come here and uh, we could manage to record him is uh, from Holland. I think more and more these kind of interviews will be shown probably on television in your countries and on our own website. And maybe people should go and interview him and write articles. When they come across a person, a normal Westerner who is awakened, I think people's interest would dramatically grow. And I think with that, the norm also would uh, speed up. I think we are uh, getting very, very close to the turning point. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe tomorrow or day after, you'll be able to see it on our website. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Can, you, can you tell us his name? His name is Edwin. 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 Uh -huh. Edwin. Uh -huh. 
Indian from Holland. He's a pilot, uh-huh. an airplane pilot. <laughs> so, um, our, our next question is about um, 2012, and we're seeing we already are seeing a, a time of rapid change, where many things are happening. As we move towards 2012, we expect these things to happen even more. And uh, the question is, what plans should we make, uh, really? Uh, as we move towards 2012 and also after 2012. Uh, plans, um, as Deepshi Givers, you've started to talk about what we should be doing. But uh, what about also our plans for what we should we be thinking about food and other daily essentials as well? So both before, uh, at that time, and also after 2012. Yeah, that's the plan only before that. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and the plans for leading up to 2012, we shouldn't have to worry about. 2012 is not uh, does not represent any particular year as such. It represents the period of 23 years from 89 to 2012. So it's a 23 year period. Though we often refer to it as 2012, it's actually 23 years. And already a lot of calamities have happened. It's not that something is going to specially happen. We have already had enough calamities in the last uh, 21 years or so. So we are right through 2012 now. That particular year only represents the closure of uh, what is happening. So we are in the midst of the crisis right now, starting with 89. Both the positive and the negative are happening. We call this uh, two ages uh, running concurrently. We also call it uh, the Sandhya Vela, which means between sunrise and sunset, no? For one age it is a sunset, for the other it is sunrise, that intervening period. So both running uh, parallel now. So we are in the midst of 2012. That's what uh, even Haiti represents. What happened Haiti is part of 2012. So we can expect to see more things like uh, this. We have faced the questions fast. We can have a longer meditation today, probably for six minutes. Okay. Thank you. So we have to increase the duration of our meditation if we are going to become awakened. Wonderful. Thank you, Thank Bhagavan. You. Thank you, Bhagavan. So we'll go for a longer and deeper meditation. Excellent. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you. Yes.